This video is an ad for Dying Light 2. Shadow it's me, Martina. Now, listen, we do a lot of fantasy stuff on this channel. You know, fantasy is an amazing aesthetic, arguably the best. But another great one is post-apocalyptic stuff. And I've always wanted to make a post-apocalyptic city, like an actual abandoned city full of broken buildings and broken down cars, everything covered in dirt and debris, and just make it look like nature is starting to take over again. But I've never really dared to begin because it just seems like such a daunting task to even start. However, we got a sponsor! And guess what they wanted? Yeah, Dying Light 2 wanted us to make an actual abandoned city from their new game. And I guess now that we're actually getting paid to do this, I have run out of excuses not to. This is still super scary. I'm a bit nervous that I'm not gonna be able to do the game justice, but I'm gonna try my very best. That's actually all I need for now. I might have gone a little overboard with the shopping. At least we have plenty of foam for future projects. So here's what we're gonna use as the base that we're gonna build everything on top of. This acrylic sheet is going at the very bottom. It's mainly there for structural integrity and also making it easier to slide around. And then a layer of this XPS foam on top to make it easier to attach the buildings and everything else to the base. So first of all, let's clean this with some alcohol just to make sure that the glue will actually stick to it. And now let's apply some PVA glue. Smack them together and add some weights on top while it dries. There we go, a nice solid base. This is where the fun begins because now we can actually start, you know, building. So we found this really cool wallpaper from the game and I just, I need to recreate this. So we're gonna try to make all the buildings on either side here, plus the road going down the middle. And to build it, we're gonna use some cereal boxes because you know, they kind of look like high rise buildings. <laughs> Let's first of all, try to make something that looks like a city and then we can build on top of that. We got all the cardboard buildings down, so next I'm gonna cover everything in some 5mm XPS foam just to make it look a bit nicer and make it easier to texture. My God, <laughs> covering up these cardboard boxes in XPS foam has taken me way longer than I would ever imagine it to take. I'm just now starting to realize the scope of this project is probably slightly bigger than what I initially thought. Hansi is gonna start working on the two huge domes that are going on top here. And in the meantime, we're gonna start working on some details on these buildings because right now they're just gray boring blobs. We need stuff like windows and railings and pipes and basically everything that makes these buildings city buildings. I got a bunch of different materials to start making the details here. So I have all kinds of wooden sticks of different sizes and shapes. I got these like really cheap at the crafting store and I'm really just gonna try to find whatever is nice to use for beams and some edges for the buildings, things around the windows, all kinds of structural things that are gonna add detail here. All we need now is some hot glue and uh, we can start putting on all of these wooden things. <laughs>
Hey guys, so while Martina is working on the main architecture for this project, which is, well, basically most of it, I'm also gonna help a little bit and I'm gonna make the domes that are very visible in the back of this project, you can see in the reference image. And I do think they add a lot of personality and character to this city. So when I began, I didn't actually know how I was supposed to make them, but I ended up using Blender, which I am really bad at, but it didn't turn out so bad. I have already 3D printed them using our normal FDM printers, and yeah, I'm pretty happy. So what I'm gonna do now is to finish these, and since these are FDM prints, you have these very visible layers. Wouldn't have if I used the resin printers, but these are a bit too big for that. So now I'm gonna use something I've never used before, which is like a epoxy resin top coating called XTC 3D. And yeah, it's supposed to make 3D prints smooth. Never used it before. So let's see if this is a whole waste of time or if it's actually a great product. So I have applied the resin and so far it is looking really good. But we don't really know yet because it has to cure for about four hours. So I'll be back with the results and then we can also do the paint job. Oh my god, these buildings are starting to look so good! I mean all the detail here is just really starting to make this look like structures. Next we're gonna start adding some windows and some railings and some pipes on the outside of the buildings here and I've already created the designs for the windows and railings in Photoshop and I've used our laser cutter to cut them out and I know most of you probably don't have access to fancy tools like laser cutters and stuff but I think if I were to make this by hand I would use something like matchsticks or something to make the railings. We've done that in the past and it works pretty well and for the windows I think I would just simplify the designs a bit and use an X-Acto knife to cut them out or just make a little smaller project because this is, you know, pretty big. Here are the windows and the railings and it's actually pretty simple. I just cut out two layers of this, glued them together to give it some depth and we have some window frames that also two layers and together four layers. Oh, I just think all these layers are gonna help create more depth and more detail on the building here and on the back of the windows I just attached some foil cones. It's meant for baking, but you know, it's just a clear plastic sheet. So I just glued it to the back so we have some reflection in the glass. And finally, we have the railings. Fairly simple design, but enough to make it fancy-er-ish. I guess I just have to start cutting holes in the buildings, which is a little terrifying because if I cut it wrong, you know, I can't really fix it. Um, but we just have to do it. been super intimidated by making buildings because you have to construct things and things have to be straight and it's not like making nature when you can just make organic stuff and it looks good. I mean there are some things here that are a little bit crooked but I think overall they just look really good. And I think the windows here and the railings just added so much to this. And I also added some like clear glass down at ground level and I just used some old like plastic boxes we had lying around and just broke it apart to make these windows. Now 
everything is Mod Podge, so everything is primed and ready for painting. We have just so much left to do. Like, we gotta paint the buildings, we gotta make the road, we gotta make a bunch of miniatures and paint them, and Hansi is gonna make the domes and also some cool light effects, and it's just... it's a lot. But we just have to work fast, and I really think we can do this, so let's get painting. at the beginning of this video, this diorama is based on Dying Light 2, which is an open-world action role-playing game where you're set to survive in a zombie apocalypse. You have to navigate through a beautiful but dangerous world of monsters and humans using parkour skills, clever thinking, traps and creative weapons. You can explore the vast world and the city, discovering different paths and hidden passages, but be careful at night, because that's when the monsters come out to hunt. Or use it to your advantage and try to explore the infected's lairs. Your actions and choices through the game will impact how the story unravels. And what's pretty cool is you can play co-op with your friends and you can see how their choices has impacted their world compared to yours. Dying Light 2 is actually out now on PlayStation, Xbox and PC, so if you think this sounds interesting, then make sure to check out the link down below. And back to the project. The paint job on the buildings is finished, well, except for the roof, we're gonna do that later. I think it turned out pretty good, like it's gonna be a fairly basic concrete building, so it's a fairly basic color. <laughs> but I really think that concrete paint we used at the beginning added a lot because the whole building just has this really nice texture that really came forward when I highlighted everything. And I think the rust effects here on the railings and the doors really just add that little bit of so now that we have the buildings, we can start working on all the details as well as the base that this is gonna be put on top of. So to add more detail in here, we decided to go to the local railway modeling store and we picked up these building kits. So we got like a staircase, some trash cans, and all of these have to be put together. So Hansi has been spending a lot of time doing just that. Now they're all ready to be painted, but I realize I'm not gonna be able to paint all of this by myself. So I kindly asked my friend Arilla if she wanted to come over and help me paint some of these. And she kindly agreed, thank you so much. So while she's working on that, I'm gonna start working on the asphalt road that is going between all of these buildings. So Hansi had a great idea for how we can try to make the asphalt road. So we got this cork mat. The cool thing about it is it has this funky texture that kind of resembles asphalt. But when you break it, it also gets these very natural looking cracks so we can make the asphalt kind of look old and worn. And so I'm planning to put this in the middle here to make the street. And then I'm gonna put some concrete paint on top and try to do a paint job that makes it look like old and worn asphalt. I haven't actually used this method before. I haven't seen anyone else use it, but I think it could work. So let's test it out and see how it goes. First of all, I'm just gonna carve out this part in the middle so we can lower the cork a little bit. Oh, that's a horrible sound. I think that should be deep enough, so let's just cut a strip of this to fit in here. 
I got this strip here, so now I'm gonna try to make some cracks in this and in as much of a controlled manner as possible because this breaks very, very easily. But I really want those natural cracks in the asphalt. And now we can glue it in place just using some hot glue. I gotta say, it looks pretty promising. So next, I'm just gonna fix the sidewalks here by making them look like concrete squares. Just gotta cut it with a knife and uh, a pencil. And then we can apply some concrete paints and do the paint job. The next detail I'm gonna make is just some newspapers. So I printed out this sheet with newspapers made to the right size. So now I'm just gonna stain them with some coffee and then cut them out. So it's been a little while since we put the epoxy on the domes and if you're like me you are super excited to know the results and let me tell you they are looking really good i am uh, very excited to see how well this worked we are gonna paint these domes in kind of an oxidized bronze thing but i'm not sure how because martina usually does the painting but we'll see <laughs> maybe, maybe it's gonna be good <laughs> anyway i'm gonna do that I'm gonna do something I know more about, which is the lights. And then we have to paint planks and we have to make like oxidized ventilation system and pipes. So many things in this build. Let's get going. Let's paint. Okay, something kind of funny we found out. We have all of these building kits, these annoying plastic parts that we have to build. And if we just cut away at the edges, the frame itself kind of look like pipes. So now we have to paint them like rust and they are gonna look like pipes and we're gonna place them all over the build. So we have to make all of these tiny, tiny tube lights for the diorama. And I'm gonna use filament lights, as I've said before. To make kind of the enclosure for the light, I am using 3D printing filament tubes. So these come with the 3D printer. You can buy them externally. And I'm just putting the filament inside, which is kind of ironic because it's made for filament, just a different kind of filament. And then it turns like into this very softened filament light. Thought it was a cool trick.
I really thought I was gonna take this shot like three days ago, but every time I think we're ready to assemble this, just something else comes up that we either have to fix or some other detail that we think, oh, we need that, we have to add that, and then things take much longer than originally planned. Like, for example, I figured the platform we put everything on was a little too narrow because the buildings were a little too close. So I extended it with something extra here, but then you have to add the concrete again, do the paint job again, try to blend it, and also like adding some graffiti on the walls. That is taking a lot of time and then finding other details we can add, you know? All the details are taking so much time. <laughs> But it's also what's gonna really make this diorama, I think. So I finished up the road. I think the asphalt technique worked out really nicely. Hansi finished the domes. Aurelia's painted her miniatures, which turned out amazing. You should really check out her Instagram because she paints some awesome stuff. But now it's finally time to start assembling everything. And oh my God, I've been waiting for this for like 10 days or more. Because now we can finally start adding all the details in here, like the pipes, the light effects, and the foliage on top that is gonna bring everything together and make this look like the lost and ruined city that it is. Let's do this. My God, it is finally finished. And if you've stuck with us all the way till the end, then I applaud you because I nearly didn't. I mean, this has been the most intricate, most complicated diorama we have ever done. There's just so many details and so many things in here. And it's been, it's been super fun to make, but it's also been kind of frustrating, you know, putting all of this together. I'm like, glad it's done. <laughs> and also a huge thanks to all of you for watching this video. And of course, of course, a huge thanks to our patrons for continuing to support us. And last but not least, a big thanks to Dying Light 2 for making it possible for us to work on cool projects like these. I mean, it's always so much fun working with brands that, you know, let us create what we want to create. And this has been one of the most fun projects we've been working on. So now, the moment we've all been waiting for, taking a shower. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, that too. But it's finally time to have a look the final result! 